cap and this cap on the track. With your boy ATB and Miss Leah. This is your host, ATB, aka America's Teddy Bear. And I'm your favorite co host, Miss Leah. Hey, 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 happy Friday, y'all. Happy Friday, people. Hey, hey. Yeah, what's going on with you, Miss Leah? How you feeling? Oh, I'm doing a little better. I was hungry okay. before we got started, so I had to gobble down a sandwich real quick. So <laughs> uh, I guess that's going to hold me down for a little. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing good. That's funny you said that. I was dogging some chips before we uh came on and I had to get the chips all out my beard. I'm like, damn. <laughs> I must be hungry too. So that's crazy that that happened to you because I was over here. I told you to give me two extra minutes, man. I was dogging these little classic, I think they classic lays, a yellow bag, oh. just a fire. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, what happened when you wait to the last minute to start doing stuff. I don't know why man. I was doing that. Trying to tell you, man. But guess what, though, y'all? You know what I'm saying? We got a winner on the giveaway. You know what I'm saying? All right, Mr. Kobo, we need you to go ahead and give us some drums today or something like that. A drum roll if you can't find it. And you know what I'm saying? Go ahead, Mr. Leo. Who is it? And congratulations to Ari Strong. Hey, hey, hey. Congratulations, Ari Strong. You are our winner for our giveaway. Thank you for listening in to all five episodes and submitting mm-hmm. your answers, which were all correct. All you have to do now is just reach out to us and let us know how you would like to receive your um, your winnings and mm-hmm. through PayPal or not PayPal, I'm sorry, through Zelle or Cash App. And we'll reach out to you and we'll take it from there. But congratulations to Ari Strong. Congratulations. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to her, man. That's my cousin. And uh, the crazy part about Miss Ari is this y'all y'all don't know this miss ari is a um emergency room nurse so i don't know i don't know how she have time to listen to it or maybe she don't work nights or she do work nights i know she doing both and she on call but i ain't gonna lie kudos to you for being at the hospital or wherever you be at checking us out man you know what i'm saying yeah, we appreciate really you appreciate you yeah. So make sure you email us and reach out to us and let us know which way you would like to receive your winnings and we'll hop right on it. That's a fact, y'all. That's a fact. So any anyway, it'll be plenty more uh, giveaways we're going to be doing. Just showing love to everybody on our page and doing a live podcast and y'all can give us, uh, you know, topics. So y'all stay tuned for that too as well. You know what I'm saying? So Ms. Leah, you know what I'm saying? Hey, check this out. You know, I got a scenario for you and this is kind of like, you know, I know you went to crime. I'm into crime. That feared our neighbor kind of crime. You know what I'm saying? I got the question for you though check this out what if say for instance you're in the apartment or or you just in the townhouse but like the walls are really thin okay let's just say that and just picture this with me you can hear your neighbor all the time next door through the walls because they thin and what if you hear your neighbor getting killed or murdered and then you hear the door slam and they come to your knob trying to twist your knob and you behind that door. Now, first of all, would you go help your neighbor when you hear the screaming? Or would you just be tucked in your apartment trying to call 911 and then your door not with the jiggling because they're trying to come in your place next? What you doing in that type of situation? I know that's a lot to take in, but what you doing? <laughs> Yeah, man, I'm calling out one one. <laughs> I, you know, these days I'm learning to man my business as much as I would really want to help her. But what can I do against mm-hmm. somebody that's murdering her? Like, what can I actually? I don't have any weapon, you know, as far as a pow pow mm-hmm. to go over there and try and stop mm-hmm. it. So, 
you know, yeah, I can fight really good, but I don't think that's going to help. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to have to mind my business on this one and just call 911, let them know that I feel like my, my neighbor is in trouble and I may be in trouble next. And I'm going to try to round up whatever I can in this house. I got me some good jail mace and I'm just going to mm-hmm. stand behind this door. And as soon as they think they finna come up in this joint, I'm going to spray their ass down. I'm going <laughs> to drop them. I'm going to drop them and just run out the crib. Like, nah, man, I, by any means, I'm saving my life by any means they gonna have to let me tell you they gonna they gonna be fucked up real good messing with me they they it's, i'm not gonna be an easy kill for nobody unless they come up behind sneak up i'm not gonna be no easy kill okay so so let me ask you this i'm gonna put a twist on it real quick a lot of people that live next door to each other um or, or apartments or wherever they become best friends or you know like what if it's a best friend this is your best friend your road dog y'all fall together, y'all uh, party together, everything. Does that change anything on you uh, coming on out of there and running next door? Like, what's up in this house? You know what I'm saying? Listen, um, the only way that's going to change is if that's my son or my family member. I mm-hmm. love my friends. Don't get me wrong. I do. But the mm-hmm. only way my adrenaline going to get me to run up out that house and risk my life is if it's my son or if it's my family member. If mm-hmm. it's a friend, I got you over here on the other side with 911 friend. Just be strong, hang in there, fight back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get you some help. But if that's my son, I'm not thinking about none of that. If that's my mm-hmm. mom, I'm not thinking about none of that. I'm I'm going out this front door. I'm busting through the second one. And I'm just mm-hmm. going to do whatever it is my body allowed me to do to help my people. Like... It's, I don't know. For me personally, I know they make, this may sound messed up, but for my mm-hmm. family and my, cho- my child, I don't think. I don't think about none of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I don't have time to, like, think rationally. But if it's somebody that I just really, for me personally, I'm not risking my life for my friend. I'm sorry. I don't expect them to risk their life for me. I, I'm, I'm going to try to help, but I'm not, not mm-hmm. in the way of risking my life. So, no. Yeah, that's a fact, you know, and like you said, if, if it's different if y'all fighting or something like that, you'll throw a couple of licks with your friend or whatever, whatever, but to just like downright take a, a killing for a friend, I don't know, like if it was me and I hear these horrific uh, screams and, oh, help me, uh, he died, like, oh man, bro, hang it up, <laughs> I'm going back through the wall, like, I got you, bro, they coming. <laughs> People strong, <laughs> they strong. <laughs> Cause on the real, like you said, when there's certain people, it's a no-brainer. You don't even think. Like and it's like if I die, I die. You know, like you said, kids, parents, anything like that. Yeah, you don't even think. You running out that door. But if it's just a great neighbor, a great friend, yeah, it ain't worth me losing. You know what I'm saying? My life folding. Are you gonna take care of my kids and all that when I'm gone? Like let's be one hundred. Like there's more I got to lose. You feel me? So, yeah, I definitely uh, respect that. And on, on the flip side, like, if they turn in my knob, oh, they don't want to do that. You know what I'm saying? I got I got a couple of hot ones in this, you know what I'm saying, this joint for them, you know. But I will play like, you know, I play possum, though, you know. Please, don't don't twist them out. Don't come in here. We, we a good Christian ho- host of people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I already know we're gonna be like, yeah, I'm ready for to come in now, you know what I'm saying? And it's long and old, as soon as we crack that door, you know what I'm saying? A bunch of hot ones, all this chest space, all that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, you know, I would just say, yeah, that situation there is tough. But definitely for a family member, <clears throat> I'm down on rocking. Uh certain family members, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna lie. First cousins, y'all may be out of there too. I ain't gonna lie, you know what I'm saying? We keep the 100, first cousins, second cousins. I love y'all, you know what I'm saying? And man, y'all heard us say Miss Ari, a nurse. You know what I'm saying? Y'all just try to make it to the hospital to see if she can have a say y'all or something, man. You know what I'm saying? But no, nah, I ain't doing nothing no cousins. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, no, none of that. But, but immediate family, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm going to hold y'all down. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. This question made me realize that I need to invest in me some armor because I do live alone. You know what mm. I'm saying? And, you know, even though my son be in and out, you know, he not, he's mm. more out than in. So I, I really do need to, I've been saying I'm going to get me one, get me one. But for my birthday in February, I'm going to get me mm. some protection and I'm going to customize it. Yeah, it's going to be nice, but yeah, I definitely mm-hmm. got to invest in myself. Yeah, yeah, I had to get the wifey one, and she got a pink handle on hers, you feel me? So nice. definitely customize it when they looking at it laughing like, man, it's pink. Yeah, but it's just the hot ones. 
and shoot the mob ones right out of there. You know what I'm saying? So I would say, yeah, definitely try to get your Floyd card and go on grab you one. Uh, if you want to do the concealed carry, take that class. It's only, uh, I think, 16 hours, two days. That's it. And the second day, you do a lot of shooting. So it, it's not that that hard of a long process to go and get certified. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we don't even have to in Iowa. You, it's, um, it's open open carry out here. Uh, I would, yeah, it's open carry out here. Um, well, I see the it's either I know we don't have to do classes. We can have a gun and have not have to go through classes and stuff like that. I don't know which one that is. Is that open concealed, open carry? I don't know mm-hmm. different because I'm I'm pew pew stupid. But when it comes to like that, but I do know that you don't have to have a license to to mm. carry. You, Whichever one that's called in Iowa, you don't have to have a license to carry. I know that for sure. So I can just go and buy me one and, and go out with it as long as I got it concealed. If I mm-hmm. get pulled over, I'm good. I'm not gonna get like in no trouble or nothing. Like a we can we can have it. So, but, so I would take classes for that. See, that's why my cousin live out there. I told you my cousin Richard. You know what I'm saying? You know, cause I'm about to holler at you, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need a street sweeper from you out there, you know what I'm saying? Y'all ain't got to do that. You know what I'm saying? Oh. <laughs> well, what? I didn't know that. Why we got to do all that? They know Chicago always shooting up some shit, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Man, it's crazy. We got to be certified out here. I'm, I'm jealous. <laughs> that should be the least place where I am saying I was gonna say that should be the least place you should be have to be certified, but for real. It's bittersweet with real? that. Yeah, man. But what you got, Miss Lee? I'm sorry. I know we went all off, man. What you got? Um, I got something that ties in a little bit into that whole question you just asked. It's funny okay. that you asked that because my question is a little bit of a piggyback from that. So my question is, could you still be with somebody who ran or walked away while you were fighting or being shot at? Oh, man. Oh, that's, that's, that's tough. Now, I will say it like this. If it's wifey and it's a bunch of guys, go get help. Yeah, I'm going to try to fight all of them. You know, but I know my wife. She's going to try to fight with me. You know what I'm saying? But if you got somebody, and I seen one video. It's funny you said that. I seen one video when the guy ran. The guy ran, left his girl, and they snatched up purse and all that, and he ran. He took off. You know what I'm saying? But me, myself... In the day they seen, no, that's a no, no. I don't care. I don't care if you're a girl, you better fight with me. You know what I'm saying? Because if it's a bunch of girls trying to fight you, I ain't gonna lie. I don't, I'm not gonna be. Nah, I ain't gonna say I'm gonna be beating on the women. I'm gonna be flexing them off my girl. You know what I'm saying? Get out my girl, smack. I might even smack one. You know, hey, nah, go, come on now. In the in the, in the in the hey, kick him in the butt. You know, in the moment. You know what I'm saying? It's like smack, smack. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, somebody left me. And I didn't tell them, like, go get help, go get help. I got these three dudes. I ain't tripping. What's up? What's good? Then if, I, if you don't tell them, go get help, you know what I'm saying? I'm expecting uh, even my girl, whoever, just, just stand right there, fight with me, win or lose, you know what I'm saying? And, and it depends on the girls because some girls are tough, man, you know. So, like, Miss Lee, I believe you tough. I know my wife is tough, you know. It's a tough girl. There's some girls out here. I think there were some dudes with me, so, you know what I'm saying? Like... It depends who with you, but no, that's a no no. If, if we dating and and it's just a girlfriend boyfriend thing or whatever, even a marriage, man, you better not never run. You better stand right there and fight with me. You know what I'm saying? But what about the the the, the shootout? Like if it's a shootout and she ran, would you and you caught up with her? You you scathed the shootout. You you was able to make it safe and get back home. Like she ran, would would y'all have a conversation? Or you be like, uh uh-uh, uh, you left me for dead. I'm done with you. Well, you know what? In our case, in, in me and her case, the only thing about us, we could still carry. So I know she's going to just run for cover, if anything, and get the shooting at these people. You feel me? Like, she ain't going to leave me. She might run for cover, and she's pulling it out, and she's shooting. So I know that about my girl for sure, you know, because we, we talk about things like that. You know what I'm saying? Now, if it's just a situation, like you said, she ran, and it's a shootout, and I, and I survived it, oh, I don't know. You know, it's behind closed doors. Schmack, 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 schmack. <laughs> don't you laugh? I'm going to be your ass when you try to get me killed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what you uh, doing? Oh, 
Um, yeah. If if I if I'm uh, getting jumped on and my dude take off, <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's self explanatory. Like he might as well stay gone. He might as well keep running. Don't ever come back because it's over with. Like mm-hmm. there's nothing to come back to. Like is nothing else to come back. Because what is you running for? You a whole man? Why is you running? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But if it's a shootout. I don't know. This one a little different for me. Mm-hmm. I, if he ran, especially if he don't have a gun, right? And and I'm I'm getting shot at, and he run. Low key, I can understand why. Because what is he supposed to do to bullets? What is he supposed to do? Like I I I kind of will understand why he ran if, if he don't have a gun to shoot back. Because he can't. Mm-hmm. Where well, you gonna stand in front of the bullets and be Superman? I don't expect nobody to take no bullets from me. So mm-hmm. in that situation. I, I will feel away. I'm not going to lie. But I once I calm down, I will understand why. Now, fighting, mm. yeah, you run, then you will be a B-A-N, like, for real, for real. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. And you can just stay gone exactly. because I can't even look at you the same after that. Like, you you will be a whole female to me after that, <laughs> for real. Exactly. Now, let me ask you this. This, this is a real question. This is real life. We always talk about real life. Now, in a, in a real life situation, say, for instance, my girl, and they shoot him. I would have to cover her to die, basically. You know what I mean? Like, that's my job as, as her being my wife. Now, now, it's your husband. Do you expect him to cover you, die for you, or still run? Like, they shooting. They shooting. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and leave you. You know what I'm saying? Because in that case, I think any man will protect, like, his family or his girl. You know, if I die, I don't want to die, of course. But I can't live to tell the story and let my girl get shot up. You know what I'm saying? Like, what would you do? What would you do in that situation if y'all married? And do we supposed to like come cover you, take these bullets for you? You know. Um. Naturally, yeah. People think. I mean, some men feel feel that way. And and big ups to the guys that are like genuine protectors, and especially in a situation like that. Even as my husband, I won't expect him to. But if he do. That's a beautiful thing, but I'm not going to be like, you're my husband. You jump in front of me and don't let me get shot. Like, no, I'm not going to expect no stuff like that. Like, no, I don't expect nobody to die for me. Like, I, I don't know. But if he put himself out there for me, like... I can't even begin to explain the type of rewards he gonna get. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm, not, exactly. But you know, yeah. But but to answer the question, I don't expect not even my husband to jump in front of bullets for me. Now, if that's something he decides to do on his own, you know, for his love for me, then mm-hmm. yeah, I'll be very appreciative. But I don't expect it, and um, I wouldn't. I don't know how I would feel if he decided mm-hmm. not to, and when we got home or however, but. I'm definitely, I don't know how to respond to that because in one one hand, I get it. And the other hand, it's mm-hmm. like, damn, so you just left me for dead? Like, I don't know mm-hmm. which which way to feel. <laughs> yeah, it's tough, yeah, that's like tough. Like you said. Mm-hmm. That's tough. Because, you know, like you said, you get home and you die as a shootout. It's like life opener. It's like, it's like eye opening, you know, like, yeah. you left me to die. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> you left me to die. <laughs> <laughs> but I would have probably ran too. That's why I don't want to be mad because I know I probably would have took off too. <laughs> but you a girl. We expect girls to run. You know what I'm saying? It's, I think it's a human nature thing. I don't think okay. it's... A, I mean, I get it. Like, you mm. a man, you're supposed to be tough. You're supposed to mm-hmm. fight through bullets. Like, no, you're a human. Like, that's True. human nature to be afraid and to run for some people. Maybe some guys... Mm. I mean, I don't say maybe because there are some guys that will stand there like you and cover, mm. take cover for your wife or your woman. But every man ain't built like that. And, and I can't mm-hmm. hold every man to another man's standards or ways. So, I yeah. just... I won't do that. You know what? Well, that's a fact, and I respect that. Like, like you said, I'm just that way. But we don't expect everybody to be that way. You know what I'm saying? But it's just fun and games, and what if you know scenarios we throwing out there? So yeah. you know what I'm saying? If y'all got some stories or y'all got some pitches on that, let us know what y'all thinking. But it's just all like, what if? Make your brain work for me and make you think about some things. Yeah, <laughs> put that brain to work. <laughs> I right, check this out. I got a game I want to play with you, and it's disgusting, but you got to answer it. You know what I'm saying? Either way, it's disgusting. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, now, 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 Pete, Pete, <clears throat> it's called Would You Rather, okay? So, say for instance, like, uh, you say movie sometime when people are stranded in the world end, and they always say, hey, look, man, if I die, 
cut the meat off my booty, you know, my buttocks, eat that meat first, you know what I'm saying? Now, that's what they do. <laughs> now, not us, per se, our color, but the other color, you know, yeah, man, cut meat off my booty, go ahead, eat, man, you know what I'm saying? Now, in this case, I'm asking you a different kind of question. You ain't cutting no meat off the chops, none of that. I want to know that if there's no food left in the world and you're the only person and you got to survive, you know what I'm saying, by either drinking or eating, which we know. Now, which one are you doing? Are you going to be eating your own poop or are you going to be drinking your own urine? Oh, yeah. Really, ATB? This is what we're doing now. This is what our yeah. has come to. Are you serious? <laughs> I got it. Wow. Know. You know what I'm saying? Or you going to just die. Forget it. I get the third option. Or just die. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know what? Uh, take me to the king, man. <laughs> take me to the king. Because even if I'm in survival mode, I don't even know if I can bring myself to drink my urine or eat my feces. Like, this ain't two mm-hmm. girls in the cup. This ain't even one girl in the cup. I can't mm-hmm. do it. I can't do it. No, man. Take me to the king. <laughs> it's been, it's been real. <laughs> Now, let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. Sometimes people in the desert that survive, when you watch I Survived and all that on TV, you know, uh, they would tell you they had to drink their own urine just to stay hydrated. You ain't on none of that. You you ain't going to drink some urine just to buy you a couple more days in case you run across a rabbit or a dog to kill or something, you know what I'm saying? And Uh then eat. You out? I can't. I can't do it, man. I'm chucking the deuces, man. Take me to the king. (laughs) It's been real. I mean, I have 44 years. It's been good. It's been lovely. But uh, yeah, no. I, I, I'm I, going to be throwing up like as I'm yeah. trying to do it. It's just, I cannot. No, just the thought of it's making me sick and I'm about to throw up. Like, I cannot. Mm-hmm. But how you coming? Because I, like, yeah, I need to know, like, right now, skip what I'm talking about. How are you coming in this situation? I need answers now. <laughs> Man, listen, check this out. If I can buy me a couple more days, you know what I'm saying? I guess I'm drinking ATB lemonade. I ain't gonna lie, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'll be vomiting and all that, but it buy me a couple more days to try to get somewhere. Like I said, a dead dog, a dead rabbit. I, I can't eat a skunk. I right, just take me out like I eat a skunk. I ain't eating a skunk, boy. Or no raccoon, you know what I'm saying? We ain't anything else, you know. If I can get somewhere and buy me a few days, but it's only so much, so many times I'm gonna do that. You know what I'm saying? I know y'all might be like, ugh, but I'm trying to live. I ain't trying to die. Like Miss Leah just wanna die. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I'm trying to survive. I may get to a meat store or something. If I keep walking and traveling, I got the energy. I may run up on a grocery store empty. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know, but at some point, yeah, I'm gonna end up. Dying because, like you said, you, you're gonna be vomiting and you're trying to drink your own whatever, whatever, and all that. Yeah, you're gonna vomit right back though. So, I don't even know how much you're really taking in. <laughs> you know yeah, you ain't gonna be able to hold it down to survive off of it because you're gonna be throwing it back up. Yeah, I guess we're gonna have a double funeral then, Miss Lee. I guess we out of there. I'm trying to, you know, think of different ways, but no, go ahead. Count me out. Oh, you know no. And then, like, like you say, you if you come across a dog or something like that, but you wouldn't eat a raccoon. People actually eat raccoon, so you would eat a dog yeah. before you eat raccoon. And you know that's crazy. You say that, my, my, I got family members in Mississippi that kill coons, but out there yeah. they say you know they don't eat nothing uh, bad, so you can kill them and cook them. I don't know. It's tough. Even a dog is tough. I don't think either. I know I'm saying that, but the skin one. Cut the eyeballs out of the head. Oh, man. Ugh, I couldn't even kill an animal. My heart would just be so heavy. I feel so bad. Even if my life depended on this animal living so bad, I couldn't do it. I feel so oh, horrible. Uh-uh. <laughs> nah, I can't either. I'm talking, y'all. I'm just talking. Y'all know that. Now, people that came from that era of killing rabbits, hunting, and coons, and all that, they ain't got no problem with skinning and hanging it up and cooking it later. But me, I come from packaging meat. You know what I'm saying? I'm born in 80. You know what I'm saying? I come from packaged meat. Bags of chicken already in the bag. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I can't kill nothing that's skinning and eat it. I know I'm talking. But nah. Nah, yeah, that's I deep, can't. man. That's deep. That's deep. <laughs> I told you, you messing with that brain today, man. <laughs> <laughs> I would yeah. be having 
nightmares tonight. Thanks to you. <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry. Stranded man. on the desert, looking at this dog, stay walking back and forth, trying to figure out if I'm gonna skin it and eat it. This bad. Like oh, I have nightmares tonight. Tough man, I'm sorry. You know it's season two, episode one, man. I had to just give y'all something to think about. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> new season, new thoughts, new ideas. <laughs> What a way to open up the season, man. <laughs> what a way, you know what I'm saying? All right, what you got, Miss Lee? I'm listening. Oh, child, I got a headache, but uh, <laughs> we, um, we move, we move. <laughs> All right, so check it out. Okay. So if you had a successful million-dollar business with a very unique name, but your consumers always pronounce the name of your multi-million-dollar business incorrectly, would you go out your way to correct the consumers on how to pronounce your business correctly, or would you care less because you're getting paid up off these people? Let them say the name wrong. I don't give a care. I'm a millionaire. How, how, would, you, how would you handle that? Would you care if they said it wrong? Mm-mm, nope, absolutely not. As long as I'm going to the bank on a regular, man, listen, get it wrong all the time. I don't care if it's some of the most craziest, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what kind of name I can even throw out there, but Dubiastic, you know, I like Dubiastic. I don't know why. Dubiastic, Diplomate, I don't care what y'all say. If it's said wrong, pronounced wrong, man, listen, take me to the bank. I ain't changing nothing for no bias. But this is your brand, though. This is your face. This is your lively. It's your brand. Yeah, yeah, true. But on the flip side, the brand you can with, with the bad name. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the brand you can already. So why even, you know what I'm saying? Like, like say, for instance, like, uh, remember in the 90s? Remember the uh, name brand Jabal? A lot of people can say Jabal. They was like Jabar or Gabar, uh-huh. you know? But it was Jabo, you know what I mean? Like, sure. Hey, man, let that name rock. Wrong and all. You know what I'm saying? Evidently, y'all loving the product. That's all that matters at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? I don't think I would, you know. Now, if it was affecting my business by not being able to pronounce my name, then, yeah, business move would be change it, you know, to something that everybody can say. But if it's juking and successful and, and, and it's just a name that people messing up, Dude, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm balling out. <laughs> what you doing? <laughs> um, I'm not sure. You know, I asked that question because I was watching um, one of my favorite influencers on YouTube. She do clothing hauls. You know, she buy mm. clothes from like different stores and try them on, and, you know, so we can get a good idea what these clothes look like to see if we want to spend our money on it. So, you know, uh, Shein and Timu are really two popular uh, brands that's out there that a lot of people shop at. Mm. But she said that it's not because she did a business a business deal with Timu and she said that talking with the representative from Timu it's not even Timu it's Temu and I'm like so wow. we were saying their name wrong and it, and some people say it's not she and it's Sheen so mm-hmm. it's like I be wondering do these companies feel a way that people are pronouncing their million dollar you know or maybe even billion dollar business wrong or do they don't care because they get in so much money that Fuck it, call it Timu, call it Sheen. I don't care. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a millionaire, like you know. But for me, if it was my business, this is the face. I'm the. This is the face of my livelihood. Like, low key, don't say my shit wrong. Don't say my name. Wrong. <laughs> so you I'm saying, girl? <laughs> I'm not even changing. Get my shit right. You know what I mean? <laughs> don't say my name. I'm gonna take offense to that. <laughs> I mm-hmm. I mean, I'm probably gonna definitely do like a PSA. Probably do a little, a little um, video and let let my consumers know. Hey, I appreciate you guys' business. Just want to let you know. Some of you guys are saying the name correctly. Some of you guys are mispronouncing mm-hmm. it. It's actually called Leah and not Leia. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'll probably do something like mm-hmm. that and hope that it gets out to the people that's uh, mispronouncing my my business because. I want it to be pronounced the way that I spent, you know, all these years, you know, coming up with the perfect name. And now mm-hmm. everybody said, like, I'm, I'm just going to be that girl. Yeah, it's, it's going to bother me. I'm going to kind of low key go out <laughs> my way to try and get people to say my name correctly because it's not Leia, it's Leah. So, yeah, I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm going out. But my you know way. what? Like, but, but see, if you're successful, like you said, and you got all these customers and clients, yeah, you can do, like you said, like a video or a live feed or, like a uh, what they call like an email boost uh, to all your customers, you know, and, and send that video to this is how it's pronounced. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, to get out there, that's actually smart. 
to do it that way. So all you got all these customers and you you successful. So now you just send that uh, that email blast or you send that uh, just live feed if you go live or whatever. Um, and I'm pretty sure once you make that video, people will start getting the name a little correct because, like you said, it's already successful. So it ain't like you not going to be reaching no one uh, when you do make that video or that PSA. You definitely should uh, still um, make some noise and they should at least get it right by the end. But that's a smart thing to do. If you can't say my name right, oh, I'm going to make this video or PSA. You know what I'm saying? Get my name right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's like that's this is your business. So it's like to hear somebody say it wrong for me, it's mm-hmm. excuse me, it feels weird. It feels awkward. It's like, no, that's not the name of my business. Like, you know, some people can be like, I don't care if they call it that, even though that's not the name of my my whole business, but I don't mm-hmm. care. I care. Mm-hmm. Like, that's not what I named it. It's not that. It's this. Like, yeah. name it right. So yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of I guess nitpicky like that about certain things. So, yeah. But no, no, you're right though, because even with the Timu and the and the Shaheen, like you say, it might be called uh, Shaheen or Shin or uh-huh. yeah, like what you say the other one was Timu or Shaheen. Timu? Yeah, Timu. It's, yes, it's Temu, but people call Temu. it Temu. Wow, I wonder what's <laughs> right. See, now you got everybody wondering, like what's right, what's wrong. But yeah, see, you never think of that. You just see the four letters. Timo, uh, you know, that's it's just... You come up like, with your own way. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> this is the start of season two, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, man, we hope y'all enjoyed it. We'll wrap it, y'all. Go ahead and take us out, Miss Lear. Yeah, and that being said, you guys, want to follow me on my TikTok at your favorite BBW319. And um, if you're more of a Facebook kind of person, you can follow me on Facebook at your favorite BBW Unmatched. And that's Unmatched with an ED at the end. So come follow up, come follow me on my socials. And um, I appreciate you guys hanging out with us and sticking to the end of uh, this episode. And I'll catch you on the next one. And this your boy ATB, also known as America's Teddy Bear. You pretty much can find me on all music platforms by just typing in America's Teddy Bear or ATB. And it should be uh, showing everything I got out there as far as music. Or you can type in Teddy Bear Chronicles, which is out now. And, uh, you know, follow me that way on music. Also on uh, platforms as far as TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. You can type in the same name, pretty much America's Teddy Bear, and you'll see all my stuff pop up on those platforms as well. Make sure you go follow us and, uh, you know, man, chime in with us, man, on the music and just our personal everyday lives, okay? We also got New Gen Investment Group. Pretty much, uh, if you're facing foreclosure and you want to avoid bankruptcy, deficiencies, or judgments, they can help you protect your credit by just buying your home as is. Uh, if, your, if your home fits the criteria, Pretty much within 30 days, they'll pay you cash for your home. You don't have to do no repairs, anything. They'll buy as is. That number is 312-468-3243. And the office number is 331-318-9197. Also, if you're interested in getting your car detail, we got JWP Detailing. JWP Detailing. And he will come to your home and detail your cars right in the driveway, if you're locally in Naperville, Plainfield, Aurora, Bolingbrook, um, or Joliet, pretty much. If you're outside of that, I'm pretty sure y'all can work some out on the fuel. But right now, I know it's those locations for the Back to School Special, $129. Uh, also, if you want to follow the page on Facebook, it's JWP Detailing. And the man name is Cameron, uh, 773 816 773-816-1470. One four seven zero, and until next time, tell your mama, your aunties, your sisters, Uncle ATB says hi, and we got this thing. Peace out.